In this tutorial, I want to show a practical example of using custom painter, and we will implement uh, this gradial radiant on the background of our mockups. So, if I turn it on and off, you can clearly see that there is a huge difference. And uh, if we switch to our app, and uh, here it's implemented version, and you turn it off and on, you will see how much difference doesn't make. Okay, so I started by creating task is background widget. For now, we just accept uh, one widget and we call child and we just return it. So we wrap our content from scaffold in this task is background widget. And let's start adding our custom painter. So let's wrap child in custom painter. And as we can see, nothing happens because we need to actually provide custom painter class and uh, that's implemented. So with custom painter, we should uh, really implement a couple of methods. First one is paint and uh, another one is should repaint. We won't really use should repaint so we can just return false because we just need to draw it once and we won't need to repaint it ever again. And uh, let's provide our background painter. Now what we have here, we have canvas where we can use different methods to draw different things. And we have size and uh, this is the size of our canvas obvious. Uh, let's try to draw something like uh, just a red square, 100 by 100. And as you can see, we have our red square over here. Now, I'm not a big fan of code like this, so I will just define different variables. Okay, so at this point we can draw, but let's try to understand how this gradient circle sorry, is implemented. So for this, let's go to Figma. And uh, what I usually do, I just try to turn everything off except what I need. And uh, we need this circle and uh, let's try to inspect our properties. So we have radial gradient, we have layer use mode overlay, 50% opacity, and we have an effect. So let's turn off the effect first. Now let's check the method of our layer. So if you're not familiar with this, that's uh, how it's calculate uh, drawing, uh, model drawing. We have the same property in our painter. Let's just switch to normal for now, because uh, if you have an overlay, we use our background to calculate the color of this shape as well. So uh, if you're interested in this, I'll show you the API for blend mode later on. And now let's say we don't want it to be the opacity. And all we have is our gradient for now. So I'd say this is where we can start uh, in our code and uh, slowly progress uh, to enable all this one by one. So in order to draw a radial gradient, we need to use shaders. And for this, we, we can use a property called shader. Now the question is how to create a shader. Actually, if we check the radial gradient class, it has a method create shader. And we can really use it. The only problem is it, it requires us to pass rect, rectangle where this uh, shader will be applied, but it's not complicated because you already have our rectangle right here. Let's just reuse it. And in order to understand logic, let's just pass a couple of colors, like red and the blue one. 
so now we actually have to draw our if you see draw rect has this radial gradient let's actually make it larger for now so this is our gradient radial gradient but that's not what we need we need it to be in the shape of a circle not an actual rectangle so let's change this to draw circle and for our center we can just use rec center radius will be uh, 150 is just half of the rectangle width or you can say rec width half and now we have our circle now let's try to apply uh, colors from our figma so we have three of them and uh, as you can see this one is not exactly in the middle i'd say it's just trying to eyeball it's 60 percent like but let's do it one by one so Okay, so we have our uh, circle with our rectangle. Now, as we can see, the uh, center of uh, our circle of our gradient, sorry, center of our gradient is not exactly the center because this is our circle let's let's find right here ah. so it's not at the center it's actually uh, in a different position yeah so we can change this as well in our uh, code so for this we need just change the alignment no sorry the center property and uh, just to guess I'd say it's 0 0.2 to the right and uh, minus 0 0.2 to the top uh, what i mean by this is that center is just 0 0 if you want to move center to the right we can say by x coordinate we can say 1 and minus 1 is left same goes to the y coordinate so minus 1 is top and uh, one is bottom and uh, if you go to 0 0.2 it moves a little bit to the right and minus 0 0.2 a little bit to the top and it looks very close to what we have right here now let's just uh, see what other effects we can apply right now let's change the mode to overlay again and change this in our uh, code for this we have blend mode property so and we have all the same blend modes as in figma and we can find overlay as well and it looks exactly the same now the tricky part is that uh, in figma there is opacity as well like 50 percent and it looks different with 100 percent and 50 but we don't really have this property in our slaughter api so in order to change achieve the same effect what we can do is we can just say that Capacity of the colors will be 50% as well. And it looks the same as in Figma now. Okay, our last thing is uh, our blue effect. And it's quite big blue, so hit one. In order to achieve blue, what we need to use is a property 
on our paint called mask filter and we can see that there is a mask filter blur and uh, blur style normal and sigma is 82 and now it looks exactly the same as in Figma. Let's just position this correctly as we have it on our design. Let's revert all the changes we made. And let's think about the size of this gradient. So I'd say it's uh, so it's probably like 90% uh, uh, of the width uh, of our screen. So it's uh, 310 here, and our screen here is 375. And then uh, center is a little bit of that from this uh, top left corner, around like 50 units. Let's just try to eyeball this. So for this we can use like for width of our rectangle we can use size width and for height as well. And now in terms of the offset, let's say uh, so if you offset uh, by half uh, by half of the screen size, we will be somewhere here, and uh, it will look like this. So we need to offset it here plus add fifty units to the bottom and fifty units to the right. And I was wrong. Oh, obviously it should be minus. Okay. And it still looks, yeah, now it, it's close. So we can refactor this code now. And that's it for this screen. Now, if we go to our home screen, you can see that there is another gradient at the bottom. Actually, in Figma, even this screen has another gradient at the bottom. It just doesn't have any sense to draw it because it's usually overlaid by the keyboard. So it doesn't have any sense to implement it on this screen. But if you go to this screen, we can find another gradient over here and uh, I think we should implement this as well. So what we can do is we can just uh, move all this code into another function like draw circle gradient And let's actually implement this gradient uh, on this screen as well, just to see how it looks like. So it's a little bit bigger than on the top left corner. Actually not, it's just the offset is a little bit different. Now let's think about the position. So we need to position it uh, to the width of uh, center should be this width point of our screen and shift it to the left. So I'd say it's size width. Actually, it's not the center of the gradient, it's left point. So it 
should be just uh, middle of the screen minus 100 units. So side width divided by two minus 100. And uh, let's say size dot height minus 300 for now. And uh, now let's think about that height. And now we need to up it for about 80% of the size of our rect. Okay, I think that's about right. Maybe 70. Okay, now there is a fun part that we actually if you show our keyboard, it's moving our red rectangle because size of our painter changes. In order to prevent this, we can just say uh, there is a property in scaffold to prevent this. Yeah, here is it resized to a white bottom in fact. And now it stays right here. Now we can add it uh, to our home screen label. And here we go. For sure, we have this kind of background uh, on every other screen in our app. So we can just create our task is scaffold to avoid repeating ourselves all the time and just reuse one scaffold. But I think it's not really important to, to how to work with custom painters. So that's it. Thank you. Please subscribe.